You don't want to invite in hundreds of people with just a import of your database and then a click to send out. Yes, it's fast. Fast is not always good. The slow approach works. So the big question is this, how do most agents who don't have access to the secrets that the top agents in our industry hoard to themselves grow and prosper in today's real estate environment? That's the question. And this video podcast is the answer. I'm Pat Hyben and welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Rockstars, this is Matt Temple, your host. Today's episode went to some places I didn't expect it. We really got deep on connection and building relationships with your sphere and with the database of people that you're networking to. But also we got into some best practices around engaging your database. We got some tech tips for you. And we actually got into how to be a better speaker and how to be a better author. So if you're interested in any of those topics, stay tuned. You're gonna love this interview with Patrick Galvin. Welcome back, Real Estate Rockstar Nation. This is Matt Templeton, your host. And today we have Patrick Galvin. Patrick is the chief galvanizer of the Galvanizing Group, which is a company that coaches people out of Portland, Oregon. Patrick is a past president of the Oregon chapter of the National Speakers Association. But more importantly, he's been working with salespeople, real estate agents, and other high-performance teams like yourselves in building better relationships, in connecting with their consumers. Lately, I've seen Patrick in a number of amazing venues, and I was really impressed with his message and the content he had for them, for the people that were there, and I wanted to make sure and bring it to you guys. So today we've got Patrick Galvin talking about uh, connecting, building businesses around relationships. His book, The Connector's Way, a story about building business one relationship at a time, has sold over 23,000 print, Kindle, and Audible copies. You can actually get that on Amazon Prime right now for free if you hurry on over there. We'll talk more about that when we get into this with Patrick. But today we have Patrick Galvin. Patrick, fill in any holes that I missed and tell me a little bit more about what we're going to talk about today. Well, I love talking about this topic of building business relationships because I have had to learn it the hard way. Uh, I went to business school, got my MBA, and I didn't have a single relationship building class in business. And when I went out into the work world, I thought I could buy my way to attention through marketing and advertising. That didn't work out so well. And what I discovered for myself and for uh, all businesses is that those who really are performing at the highest levels are out there creating deep connections and relationships with people that get them uh, enthusiastic so they keep coming back and that get them spreading the word. And I can go into some of the details if you want on my story, but that's just the big picture of why I'm so excited to be here with, uh, with you today, Matt, talking about this topic. I love it. You know, and oftentimes in real estate, uh, there's always a snake oil. There's always something that's being sold to us that says, this will solve your revenue, your commission problems, right? If you just buy this, you'll have all the answers. And uh, so I appreciate that because truthfully, we're in a, we're in a part of our, our industry and, and a time in our industry where we have to save every penny we can. And, and if we can make those relationships and, and turn those relationships into sales, that's actually uh, making our profitability better, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah. And, and really, when you think about looking forward into the future, we hear about AI and disintermediation and that technology is going to take out realtors, that realtors won't be necessary someday. I, I don't believe that at all. I think that you all are involved in a very important transaction, the most important tra transaction for home buyers and sellers that probably they're going to have in their life until they have another real estate transaction. And the comfort level that they need is really difficult to come through just automation. So I'm not against technology. We can get, get into it. I think technology is super important to the extent that it helps you leverage your comparative advantage, which is building quality relationships with folks. Well, and, and I heard you say that now almost twice, that it's about deep and quality relationships. And oftentimes when I think of connecting or when I think of relationship building, I kind of think of this like fast network building type of, of style. So tell me more what you mean by quality and, and depth of connection. What does that actually look like in reality? Well, it, it could take on many forms, but it's going beyond just a transaction and forming an ongoing relationship over time. So just a, a very brief anecdotal example of that. Uh, we bought a home 14 years ago through a, uh, a Keller Williams uh, agent, great agent. And every year on my birthday, on my wife's birthday, on our daughter's birthday, we get personal cards from him. 
Uh, that doesn't sound so remarkable. I mean, a, a personal card. Uh, some people say, I used to do that. Well, the average American, according to the post office, only gets 10 of these a year. Mm. My wife has told me that she would never refer to another realtor. And I asked her why. And she said, because I feel like my realtor, our realtor really cares about me. Her friend will forget her birthday every other year, but our realtor never forgets. And it's a personal note. He takes the time. He's a very successful agent, but he sees that as one of his most important activities. And he's doing other things to build those connections. So he hasn't forgotten about us. We haven't bought or sold a home in 14 years, but we've certainly referred him. Hmm. Uh, we feel close to him. And there are a lot of other professionals who've done business with us. And honestly, I couldn't even tell you the names of some of those people because once that deal is done, we're forgotten. And it makes a difference to make people feel important. So that's mm -hmm. just a, a very simple example. And there's a lot of other examples we can talk about in this. But I really come back to this notion of, you know, how do you build connection and relationship? Well, it's not just blasting out to an email list or buying internet leads and, and marketing to the millions. I, I would argue that if you can find the, the top people who are really important to your success, and you look at where your referrals are coming from, you look at who your key referral partners are, it's not a huge number. And then I think it's important to ask yourself, what are you doing to support those people who've supported you? It's easy to go after the new and the exciting. And so often we forget the people who really are enthusiastic about us. And that enthusiasm will wane if we don't take care of it. It's like you have a beautiful plant, you don't put water on it, it's gonna die. Yeah. So in those, let's, let's dig into that because that was such a great example, uh, a personal example. What other anecdotes, tactics, examples are you seeing are really effective at building those depth of, that depth of connection? Well, you know, one of the things, so I, I am a believer in technology to the extent that it's used well. So in my own business and in the business of a lot of people that we, we, we speak with, uh, we really suggest that they think about how they could use technology to build deep connections. So an example of that would be, we all get these um, notices in our email that someone wants to connect with us on LinkedIn. We don't oftentimes don't even know who the person is because they don't bother to send a note with that notice. So just taking a moment to introduce yourself personally, maybe it's someone who you work with on the buy or sell side, you had a great transaction, just take a moment to say, hey, it's been such a pleasure working with you. I'm so glad you're settled into your new home. I look forward to seeing you again in the real world. In the meantime, let's stay connected on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So that little personal note, it could almost be something you copy and paste, but it took a little bit of effort, maybe 10 seconds more than just sending that generic, I'd like to add you into my LinkedIn network. So that's, that's a very simple example. If you're dealing with a professional, um, and they've done something for you that impresses you. Maybe it's a referral partner. Maybe it's one of your clients. Maybe it's a home buyer or seller and they have a business and you frequented their business. Well, why wouldn't you take a moment to go on to Google and review their business or go on to Yelp if they own a restaurant or on to TripAdvisor if they are in the hospitality business or write them a LinkedIn recommendation without them asking for it. It's really going out there and serving others. So the key to relationship building is really show that you care. And digital tools can be great ways to do it. A, a personal note can be a great way to do it. I'm getting a lot of traction out of sending videos instead of text messages. Hmm. So I'll do a quick video to someone saying, hey, you know, I've just had so much fun working with you. It's been awesome. I, that takes me the same amount of time as it does to text something. But I call, call them out by name, they see my face and uh, it, it makes a difference. So uh, you can really, I think, get a lot of traction using technology. But I would argue that anyone who's doing it well is saying to themselves, is this helping me build a, a deep relationship? And if it's not, you know, you don't need to do everything. Social media platforms, I don't know what the big ones are going to be two or three years from now. I know they're going to be new ones. And I know that there's going to be the, the MySpace of the future will be something that is the hot new thing today. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it's going to become the MySpace of the future is because it's really not relevant to building deep connection. And I think that if you have to make decisions for where you want to spend your time, I'm not saying don't do social media, but just do it wisely. Hmm. And for that matter, go out and, and, and build connection in your community. Hmm. I belong to a huge Rotary Club. We have two realtors in a club of 250 people. Hmm. Honestly, I think that's a joke. I mean, we should have a lot more because I know the two realtors and are really benefiting from that connection. So, you know, whether it's digital, whether it's online, how can you go out and serve the people you're connected with and build real relationships in the communities that are important to you? So I, um, I'm digging for just a second. I hear what you're saying around technology that it can serve you, but be careful because it's actually not developing deep connection. 
No, and actually there's a lot of a lot of traps and pitfalls. So LinkedIn was bought by Microsoft for $26 billion about two years ago. Wow. And as soon as that transaction took place, there was a shift that, that occurred where all of a sudden you started noticing, you know, import all your contacts and send out invitations to connect through LinkedIn. Great for Microsoft, great for the technology company. They want to add as many people to their platform as, pop, as possible. Really bad for the users because no one should be doing that. You don't want to invite in hundreds of people with just a import of your database and then a click to send out. Yes, it's fast. Fast is not always good. The slow approach works. But unfortunately with technology, they want fast because they want to show quarterly growth. Mm -hmm. They want to impress stockholders. So you've got to be very judicious and think about your, it's your brand out there mm -hmm. and technology can support it and it could also kill it. It really can. So I just, I, I just say go with eyes wide open. That's excellent. That's excellent. Real estate rock stars. This is Aaron Amuchastegui. And as you know, when you've been hearing these episodes, so many of our guests give us lots of free gifts and share the tools they've been using to become successful. We've got free real estate tools, scripts, eBooks, marketing materials, and more. We keep track of everything in our vault and it's updated with new items each and every week. If you want access to that stuff, it's totally free for being a listener. All you have to do is go to agentsuccesstoolbox.com, agentsuccesstoolbox.com and get your free gifts now. Now, I, I know that you work with a lot of real estate agents, a lot of insurance agents, a lot of salespeople, and you, you've probably seen some of the pitfalls. You've already introduced us to a few of them. What do you think that real estate agents are not doing right now that they really should be doing in, in addition to this? Well, I, I, think, I think one of the things that um, people are not doing is they are not really staying closely. They're not keeping the ties close enough with the people who they've done business with in the past. Hmm. Whether it's on the buy side or the sell side, they're always kind of moving towards the next transaction. So, you know, these personal cards, these events, there are a couple of realtors I know who people say it's old school. I went to a knife sharpening event hmm. that a realtor friend of mine put on. So this is a cool event. I went to this event. He said, you know, we're going to be doing wine and cheese. Bring your knives. It was at a knife sharp, knife sharpening shop. Uh, bring, your, bring, bring three knives and we'll get them sharpened for you. I'm thinking, wow, this realtor really knows people must like him if he's inviting them to bring knives. To the event. <laughs> <laughs> he's got right. a lot of trust that people love him because people are coming armed, but it was an awesome <laughs> event. And you know, your, your knives were being sharpened and you were wandering around talking with his team members. I mean, it was a, just a great, um, a great event for creating connection. And I had a talk with him that I had, I had not had a deep conversation with him in a long time. And I talked to a couple of other team members and he says his ROI, and those things is off the charts. Hmm. This is a store, a retail store that it was after hours. So basically they saw it as exposure. They didn't charge him. He brought in his own wine and cheese. So you don't have to spend a lot of money. And I think what he learned is he's done events in the past where he spent a lot of money. And now he's more creative about building these opportunities to, to connect with folks that it, people don't care how much money you spend. They just want to know that you care about them. Hmm. And hmm. I think that a lot of realtors are, are, are moving on to the new. Um, and it's, so it's, it's with your existing database and then it's actually going out there and serving folks in your community. So there's a realtor I worked with or got to know in Columbia, South Carolina, a KW person. And, uh, he actually went out and talked to people in the community and had his team members do the same. And they learned that everyone in that local community was concerned about public schools, that there was not enough support going to public schools. So they took that on as their cause and they show up at the events. Uh, that are fundraisers for the schools. They're out there doing uh, volunteer activities for the schools. They had a, a program where if you referred business to them, you could choose your local PTA and they would give a little uh, uh, in-kind gift to the, or a, a financial gift to that PTA. And they've really developed a, a brand as being the real estate team that cares about the local schools. And I think they did it in a really smart way where they they picked a cause that's important to them, but they also asked people what was important to the folks in their community. And they heard that it was not sectarian, political, everyone, Republican, Democrat, religious, non-religious, they all believe in that. So find a cause like that and really dig in deep and develop those ties. People see that stuff and they're very good at, point, at pointing it out on their social media. And you'll see it on their Facebook pages. You'll, you'll see it on Twitter. I mean, I think that's, you know, you want to share the story, but first of all, you want to make sure you have a good story to share. So something that's relevant to the people who you want to do business with. 
Wow. I, I really love this. And I, I want to draw attention to this because I always say that real estate agents should be homeownership experts. They should be economists of choice. And then I, I'm now adding, because I think realtors should be this community advocates. And, Absolutely. And so I, you, you just triggered in me like what I know to be true. And, and so I'm curious, what other examples have you seen of, a, of real estate agents showing up or of, of salespeople showing up in a way that advocates for their community that our, our agents could take away and go apply in their own communities, working for schools, uh, working in some of these other uh, ways, what are, you, what are you seeing? Well, I think in whatever someone chooses to do, you, got, you need to choose something that you care about. Um, so you're going to show up on a regular basis. And whatever that is, then step up in whatever that is that you care about. So in my Rotary Club that only has uh, two realtors in it currently, one of them's brand new and one of them's been there for 15 years. Wow. So why is he stuck? And we've had other realtors kind of come in and out of the group. So why has one realtor stuck with us and why is our network become important for his business not just that we buy and sell homes and we're hundreds of you know 250 people in portland but we also refer business to him because he stepped up into leadership he served on boards he served on committees so rotary is a service organization you join for service but here's the thing when you join something that you're passionate about you show up on a regular basis and people see that it's a real thing for you Everyone wants to do business with and, and refer business to those who they know, like, and trust. If you just show up at a group randomly, you miss half the meetings, and when you're there, you hang out with your friends, or you don't really make efforts to, to, to network with new people in the group, no one develops those connections of knowing, liking, and trusting enough for them to be comfortable doing business with you. So whether it's Rotary or, for that matter, any service organization or any nonprofit that you might go out and join, step up you know, volunteer to be on the board. They're going to be thrilled to have you. There's never enough leadership in any organization. Usually it's like they try to arm wrestle people into these positions of leadership and just volunteer and don't think you need to do everything. I, I, I say go deep as opposed to just spreading yourself across as many activities, hoping that you, you find that needle in the haystack, really drill down into something that's important to you and commit and people will see and appreciate that commitment and want to do business with you. That's why we have Fannie Mae as a client. Biggest client that we have is through somebody I met at Rotary who introduced me to somebody who introduced me to somebody. And now it's our most significant client. I didn't join Rotary to get Fannie Mae as a client. Fannie Mae is a fantastic client. It never would have happened if I had tried to buy some list of Fannie Mae employees. <laughs> no way. It's all through relationship and all through connection. So I want to I want to point out what I think you just established as a model for going into a uh, a service based or a community advocate based model for building relationship, and and so find something you're passionate about, maybe even something you have relationships already in, or there's mm -hmm. something that's already connected to your community. Uh, build that that connection of people tr liking you, trusting you, and even knowing you through the service that you guys do together, and then step up and be a leader in that organization, so that then you get both the the getting to, to drive the bus, but also the benefit of people seeing you because you're, you're in the front, right? Um, and so I think that's an amazing model for community advocate, uh, advocating and connecting through that. Now, one of, the, one of the things that I often talk to real estate agents about, and I hear it all the time, is, yeah, I, I want to connect with people. I want to take care of my clients, but I'm just going to wait for them to reach out to me. Or I'm going to wait for them to come back to me. Uh, I don't want to bug them, right? I, I, there's a lot of fear around... Uh, connecting or having conversations with people, following up with people. What do you tell people when they say, oh yeah, I, I've got this database. They'll come to me when they're ready. And, and truthfully, they really haven't connected or, or communicated at all with their database recently. Yeah, I struggle with that notion because I think we live in a very uh, impersonal world. Um, hmm. Hmm. I got a call from the realtor in my Rotary Club on my birthday. Uh, last year. And he's saying me happy birthday. And I'll tell you the truth. I cut him off after about two stanzas because he's got a terrible singing voice. And we had a good laugh over it. And I saw him at Rotary the following week. I said, hey, uh, was that a thing for me? Or was that kind of like a marketing thing? He goes, well, here's the truth. Um, it actually is a marketing thing. I mean, I genuinely like you, Patrick, and I like people. Uh, so I will go into my Facebook and see who's having a birthday. And every day, and some days I might call five people. Some days it might be one or two and I sing them happy birthday. And usually like you, they'll cut me off because I have a terrible singing voice. 
and we'll have a good laugh and we'll have a connection point and I'll wish them a happy birthday. And oftentimes what they'll say to me is, you know what? You're the only person who's called me today on my birthday. Hmm. So here's the thing. I mean, that, this happens everywhere. It doesn't matter you know, where you are in the country right now. We all have hundreds, thousands of friends of connections on Facebook and on LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, whatever. And, you know, name your social media flavor of choice. And ostensibly, we are just feeling just so wired and connected with the world. Well, it's an illusion for most people, and they feel the depths of it when significant things happen in their lives, whether it's a birthday, whether it's getting a promotion, whether it's something fantastic happening to them that they're sharing on social media, and they're going to get the generic thumbs up that the social media uh, platforms give them to tap on, or they'll click a, click a button and the generic message will fill in, but just go deeper. You know, if people love it. I have never called a past client, a current client on a significant event for them in their life that I see on social media and have them say, oh, you're bugging me. People love it. No one does it. No one does it. So here's the great news. The bar is super low. You do that five times a week, you're a rock star. You're going to live up to the name of your podcast. <laughs> it's, it is amazing. It's not hard. So we have one guy in Portland who's the singing realtor. My challenge out there would be, why don't you become the singing realtor in your town? Why not? I'm sure the space is open. Uh, you know, I, I, it's funny because in, in, my, in my world, I have my select group of people that I do like to sing on their birthday too. And uh, so now I feel like I need to expand that and call more people. Yeah. Like maybe just put yourself out there. So the, the, the thoughts that I had as you were speaking and it was great connection points was um, what that realtor was having to do is really be vulnerable in order to de um, deepen the relationship. You said create that depth of connection by going beyond what was expected in tapping on the Facebook button or, or just sending the quick uh, automatic message. And yet it required him to be okay with looking a little silly, uh, maybe being bad at it, right? But then that, that, that vulnerability, that humility that came with singing the song actually is what developed a little bit more of the relationship. Absolutely, yeah, no, it's, it, it, it really, after the song, we had a, about a two minute conversation. He says, that's usually the way it goes. So he says, look, on a really busy day, um, I might, if I call five people, get two of them. I'll leave a voice, a singing voicemail, which you know they're gonna laugh about and think that's funny. So you could do this whole thing on a busy day in probably less than 20, 25 minutes. Exactly. And on many days, you might only have you know, a couple of calls and then challenge yourself to go deeper. So then I would say, go into your LinkedIn and there's no realtor who shouldn't be connected with every single person who, he's, who he or she has helped buy or sell a home. You should be connected to everyone who you've, who, who you've done business with on LinkedIn. 85% of all Americans have a LinkedIn profile. So the end of your transaction, you know, put that on there, connect with that home buyer or home seller. And then what you can do is when you have some time, and I would say schedule the time, put this on your calendar, build relationships using LinkedIn, put a 25 minute block on your calendar every week, Go into the notification section of LinkedIn and just see what's happening with people in your network. So when you see that someone's gotten a job promotion, pick up the phone or text them if you're more comfortable doing that saying, hey, I just saw on LinkedIn that you got promoted. That is fantastic. I know it should have happened for you before and they're so lucky to have you in this new position. Let's go out and celebrate. Yeah. You know, you're going to be the only person probably who they're connected to who's doing that for them. And when you become this category of one individual who is celebrating the achievements of people in your network, tell me that's not going to be remembered. It is, and it will, and it makes a difference. The regular listeners of this podcast will know that I am a champion for uh, experiences, especially real estate experiences, customer experiences. And we live in an economy where experiences are, are both uh, more highly valued than services and also more highly rewarded. And what, what's so great about the examples you've, kept, you've given in both of, in many of these cases is that it's actually not that much more work to create an amazing experience. It's just going beyond the expected and adding a little bit of flair that creates this amazing experience. But people actually remember that. And I, I believe that shared experience is one of the key parts of deepening relationships. So if we're thinking about how to make these relationships work, we have to deepen them through shared experiences. The best experiences come from just going a little bit past what they expected, going beyond a little bit more. Yeah. So I want, I want to just point out another thing that I, a realtor has been doing for me that's changed my business life. I mean, it was a great business opportunity. He saw someone in his network who he thought I should meet and he created a little one minute video introduction. Hey, Patrick, you should meet, you should meet Chris. You guys, 
definitely are on the same page when it comes to relationship building. I see some wonderful possibilities for you. But that led to an amazing uh, business opportunity for me. It took him a minute to do a video introduction, way faster than, than writing an email. He sent it to both of us. And he doesn't just do that for me. That's how he's become one of the most successful realtors is he's going into his connections and finding people who he should introduce to one another. So he's mm -hmm. just kind of setting that up. You can take it to the next level and say, hey, I think you should meet this person. Why don't we all go out to coffee together or lunch? So you could, do, you could try a little bit of both, see which works better for you, what you have time for but just becoming that connector of your connections and providing an experience, whether I ended up doing business with this gentleman that he introduced me to or not, that realtor in my eyes has just raised himself to a totally higher level than the vast majority of other realtors I know because he took the time to make that introduction. If someone did that for you, how would you feel? Mm. Would you think differently of that person? I was reading a book on leadership and on, on cultures and, and tribes and groups of people uh, recently. And I had the, I, it was actually, I was actually rereading it and I had an, an aha because they talked about how if you build one-to-one -one relationships or dyads is what they call them, they actually, it actually doesn't scale. You run out of time to have uh, to, uh, so many relationships. You can only have so many one-to-one -one relationships. But whenever you build triads where you connect two other people together and that by connecting those, you could actually scale your network exponentially. And yes. truthfully, I, that was a big aha for me because I realized that I had so many dyads that I was getting overwhelmed with all the relationships I was trying to manage. And one way that you can scale these, these networks and people still feel that you provided them all this value is when you connect two people to one another and you're their connection point. They mm -hmm. see you as that valuable p third piece of the relationship, but now they're creating value with one another without you having to be the center of it. So I, it's funny you mentioned that because it just connected a thought in my head that I've been really focused on in my own work is how do we go create more triads, value for other people that doesn't require us to do all the heavy lifting all the time. And uh, so I really appreciate that. In, oh, in just, a, just a very uh, uh, useful tip that I've been using a lot recently is if I'm connected to the two people on LinkedIn, I love to do that via LinkedIn messaging where I can send a message to the two parties. And then what's great about that is they can just click and see what the other person is all about. And it's all in one platform, one place for them to do it. At. So LinkedIn messaging is really useful for making those connections. I love that. You know, and that's like sending their resume without sending their resume. Right? Exactly. It's so <laughs> simple. Yeah. Yeah. I always ask for good tech tips. That's a great one. Yeah. Send in LinkedIn messages. You, while we're on that topic, do you have any other technology tidbits like that that are just simple, small hacks that are maybe making a difference in connection or, or ways that you're building relationship or working with clients? Yeah, there's a lot of really cool uh, ways to do video. So right now, I'm, if I know the person's an iPhone user, I will just send them a video straight from my phone to them. Um, and you know by the color of the message box that comes up if they're an iPhone user. Right. So you don't have any degradation there. If they're not, I actually use a product called Loom, uh, which is a free uh, technology right now that you can actually sh create a, a little video and you get a, um, a link that you can either embed in an email or you can copy and paste it into a text message and they click on that and they see that message. Uh, this year I'm going much bigger with video because it really does build personal connection. Bomb bomb is also a great paid product that offers some bells and whistles, um, in terms of customization that I think is really, if you're going to be doing a lot of it, I think it's worth uh, looking into that product too. Um, Make but, note of that realtors loom. That is uh, a great recommendation. I just discovered loom not that long ago and you can do both screen capture and other video. That's just a really quick thing. It's hosted there. It makes it super easy because efficiency speed in these things is really helpful. So make sure you go check out loom. That's a great recommendation from Patrick. Yeah. For realtors, I think a really cool thing with loom is you could take them into one of your listings and there's a feature where you have your video embedded in the lower left-hand corner and you could say, Hey, I just saw this house. I think this would be fantastic for you. Uh, you want to come take a look at it or just sit down and sort of talk about what, how your thoughts might've changed in terms of what you're looking for. And Loom is actually better than anything out there, even some of the paid products for doing that shared screen with your video appearing at the same time. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you for that recommendation. I, uh, I didn't tell you I wanted to go here, but I want to ask you a few questions about speaking. And sure. I know you've got a lot of experience in speaking. You've, you've run organizations and a lot of our listeners are starting to think about doing home buying seminars, home selling seminars, doing more speaking for national referrals. We've been talking to a lot of people and they've been thinking about get, everyone's talking about getting on more stages. Yeah. And if you've got a couple tips you'd recommend to either novice or people that were trying to get better at speaking, what would you recommend to them? Uh, 
one recommendation above all, uh, and that is to become a, a good speaker, a comfortable speaker, and somebody who enjoys speaking, which is important. If you're going to be doing uh, speaking, you better enjoy it. Uh, according to Gallup, speaking is number four in terms of the biggest fears that Americans have. It's bigger than death. <laughs> So for a lot of people, it's a freak out thing. And I think the reason why people freak out is it doesn't, it's not a normal activity. It's like, we're not going standing on stages. So to become comfortable, what I tell a client or anyone who says, I want to do speaking, join Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. Toastmasters is a fantastic group. It's nationwide. Most cities have multiple chapters. It's super inexpensive. I think their annual dues are about $35 a year. Uh, Toastmaster clubs meet weekly. They have a great curriculum about speaking. And if you go through it, you become much, much better. They're really good about making sure everybody who shows up at a meeting has to speak. Uh, it is just wonderful. So speaking is, it's like walking a dog. I mean, if you want your dog to be healthy, you've got to take it on walks. If you want to be a good speaker, you've got to take your speaking on walks. The best way to do that is through Toastmasters, so hands down. Awesome. Awesome. And then the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, because you're an author as well, is uh, what, what inspired you to write a book or what was the, what was the connection point for you in, in writing The Connector's Way? Well, you know, we have a company uh, that helps businesses build better relationships. And what we have seen uh, is tremendous demand that we can't satisfy. And I knew that I wanted to share a message with more people. And I went out looking at the books that had been written on business relationship building and said, I could do better than this. So I started writing a, a nonfiction business relationship building handbook about mm, six years ago. Uh, it, it was really boring and dull. So I stuck it in the drawer, pulled it out a couple of years later and said, you know what, I can share everything I believe that's important about building relationships in a parable. Um, I'm a big fan of parables. I love Bob Berg's Go-Giver, the Patrick Lencioni books, the Ogmandino books. And I said, you know, I'm going to put this into a story format uh, and not make it too long. So my book could be read in 90 minutes on Audible. It's an hour and 45 minutes. It's not, it doesn't take a lot of time. Uh, and I knew that if people could get through the whole thing um, and then come to these seven rules, the seven essential things about building business relationships, and if they put those into play, they would see a, a real difference in their business. Uh, and I'm happy to say it's every year we sell more than the year before. The beauty of a parable is it doesn't go out of date. So the things I'm talking about, I hope are going to be as true today as they, and true in five years as they are today. Dale Carnegie's book uh, is constantly one of the top 100 books on Amazon, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. You know, business relationship building, I don't care. The age of the robot is not going to happen in our lives in which we're going to be replaced. What is going to allow us to thrive is our ability to build quality relationships. And anything I can do to propagate that idea and give people the tools they need to do that, I'm super excited about. I know I, I say that all the time, especially when people say that real estate's going to the technologists or going, going tech, tech wide. I said, things are progressing, things are changing, and yet humans are still humans. They still, we still connect with, with one another. And the people that are amazing at building relationships or connecting uh, on a one-to-one -one and one-to-many level in the future are going to be the ones that have the skill set that allows them to thrive in the new economy. Relationships won't go away. They'll actually become more important in the future because so many of us won't know how to do it anymore. <laughs> and, yeah, I, am, uh, I am with you 100%. And I think that that is going to separate the wheat from the chaff in the real estate industry is those who understand that and apply it. So one thing is to understand it and to say it. The other thing is to do it. And I think those that do it, those who really double down on their relationship building activities, they're going to do just fine. And in fact, they're not only going to survive, but they're going to thrive. I have a couple more questions around that. But first, I want to ask you back onto this book thing. Uh, what did you learn while writing? I mean, obviously, you started a book six years ago, and then you decided to change course completely. What were some of your, your lessons or your, your learnings along the way? Well, it's helpful if you write what you know. Hmm. So everything in my book is something that either happened to me usually things that I did wrong. Uh, my relationship building story is not a pretty one. I did a lot of things the wrong way. So draw upon, show humility by drawing upon your failures as much as your success. And then pay attention to what's happening in the people, the lives of the people you're connected with. So the other stories and elements of my book are things that happen to clients, to friends, uh, because I'm all about relationships. I changed the names because I didn't want to mess up any of my relationships. Actually, some of mine didn't even change that much. So people identify themselves who, are, <laughs> who, who read my book, who know it's, I'm really talking about them and their oh, story. Uh, so, so definitely write, write what you know. And then also just make time for it. So for me, uh, 
just committing to spending Friday afternoons and Saturday at the local college library, getting away from technology, getting away from distractions. Coffee shops don't work for me. I think that's the romantic notion of writing a book. I think most people need some focus and some time. And libraries, especially college libraries, are awesome places to go because students don't go there anymore. So they're beautiful. <laughs> There's all these wonderful places to sit. They welcome the community and just go in there and take advantage. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's just a great, thoughtful spot. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, um, you, you shared with me that this book was very autobiographical or that you you've even said to our listeners that there's people in your real life that are in it. Who were you writing the book for? What was the inspiration or who was the audience you wanted to target? Well, it, in, in many ways, it was, it was for me of uh, 20 years ago when mm-hmm. I was uh, not in the business I'm in. I was in my family's business, the, uh, the furniture business, and uh, we hit some rocky patches in the economy and mm-hmm. uh, we were freaked out that we were going to go under as a business. So I remember, you know, uh, buying uh, books and going to seminars where people were going to reveal the truth to me about what, what I needed to do to be successful. And that's actually how I opened the connector's way as a guy who's going through that in this business, he's going to some seminar thinking, I don't, I can't even afford, I can barely afford being here and all these materials are super expensive. And he just gets really frustrated. And then he comes back, after attending the seminar and through some fortuitous events, he meets some great relationship builders who show him a better way. And that's what I needed 20 years ago. And fortunately, uh, it happened not, not as beautifully uh, and, and as easily as it does for the main character. You've got to telescope down a little bit. But that really was my trajectory, was realizing it wasn't about you know, what I would buy, but the investment I'd make in the people who are going to support our business, our employees, our customers, uh, our prospective customers. And by really focusing in on creating quality relationships with all those parties, we turned ourselves around and became successful. Mm. Um, so that's, that's what inspired the book. Were, it's interesting. Were there mentors or were there people that you could say were your, the, the father of this idea in your life? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer uh, in, in mentorship. And mm. one of the rules that the main character in The Connector's Way learns is uh, seek out individuals who expose you to new ways of thinking. Uh, it's very easy to get caught in your industry and just go to people who basically say the same thing because they're all the same types of people. So look for people outside your sphere, uh, outside your industry, and you can get some great advice. So I joined a group called the Young Entrepreneurs Organization, which currently exists in a different name. It's called the Entrepreneurs Organization, and it's people across industries, and you come together and you share ideas, and it's a very powerful thing. There are many other types of groups out there. Uh, So, you know, I talk about service organizations. I think there are also professional development opportunities where you can get exposed to people who might have more experience in your industry um, or who might be in a different industry, but have experiences that would be relevant to, to what, what you might be struggling with. Hmm. That was really great. Seek out individuals who expose you to new ways of thinking. Yeah. Typically outside your industry. Uh, obviously that sounds like something that, that came straight from your book. What are some of those other uh, maxims or those ideas, those, those um, things that you have from your book that are uh, the things we really need to make sure and take away? I love that one. I'm certain you have a few more. What are some other ones our listeners should make sure and take away? So people ask me my, my favorite one. There's seven, seven rules for building business, one relationship at a time. My favorite rule is serve others without thinking how you're going to benefit directly. Um, that sort of sets the groundwork for super success. Um, there are a lot of people who are tuned into WIFM, what's in it for me. And when you run across somebody who is genuinely interested in you mm-hmm. and how they can help you and they follow through, that person sort of sets themselves up in a very different way from other folks. Mm-hmm. And I have seen it you know, time and time again, where people who have that mindset, they don't worry that is that person going to give me something back in return? because they know it's the right thing to do, but it's also grounded in science. So there's this notion of reciprocity. When you do good things for people, they want to reciprocate. They want to reciprocate. There's a guy named Robert Cialdini who wrote a book called Influence, and he talks about this, this reciprocity notion. So when you think about the world as a quid pro quo, what am I going to get out of that relationship? That is like a recipe for disaster. When you think, what can I give to support somebody to make them better, whether professionally or personally, it's, it's a fun way to live and things come back to you. And when you set a groundwork like that, 
it kind of leads into the next really important rules. You will get a lot of people reciprocating. They'll want to help. They'll want to have you help help them buy or sell a home. But you've also created a base of trust, of like, of what we just talked about. And then when you want a referral, or when you want a recommendation on LinkedIn, or when you want some help, and you've built that base of people who you've supported, people want to support you back. So you're going to need to go out and ask them. But if you're asking people who you've done nothing for, well, good luck with that. So it is the right thing to do. Serve others without consideration for how you're going to benefit. Things will flow automatically out of that. And now you've created a little bank account with people because you have been a service first individual. So when you want to do a with, little withdrawal, you want to ask for a referral, you want a LinkedIn recommendation, you want, a, you want a review of your real estate company on Google, and you ask them, of course they're going to do it for you. Why wouldn't they? Because you've supported them. That's so good. That's so good. <clears throat> when you think, what can I, we have to think, what can I give to support this person instead yeah, of- so, so another rule is, don't be afraid to ask what you can give. Mm. So you can do the mind reading thing. And actually in many cases, you know there are certain things that everyone would like. Everyone would like a LinkedIn recommendation. Everyone would like to have their business reviewed. But there are very particular things that if you ask, I, I was talking to a loan officer uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, so this loan officer went out to his sphere and asked people, how could I support you? And one person said, you know, I really don't like going to networking events by myself. I'm not socially comfortable and I see that you are. Uh, would you mind being my wingman? And he said it was an awesome request because this person, uh, he had no idea that they had that anxiety. And he said he's been the wingman for this, this individual a few different times. And their relationship has grown so much stronger because he's given something that they really valued. So he didn't guess, he asked, and then he followed through. So if you're going to ask, you have to be willing to then do what it is that they, they want you to do. And oftentimes what the request is might surprise you. That's excellent. That's excellent. Don't be afraid to ask what you can give. There's some things that are automatic, but many times they'll come up with something we didn't even think of. I exactly. Exactly. Um, and how would you phrase that? What would be the conversation? Like, what would you actually say? You're talking to somebody, maybe you have some amount of rapport with them. How would you ask them what you could give them? Well, I think you can, you can ask them in a way that makes them feel really, it's like, wow, you're, you are so successful as an insurance agent, as a loan officer, whoever it is, that this might be a conversation you have with a referral partner, or it might be with a with a home buyer or seller just saying, I, I, I want to provide value to you. I'm not sure what it is. How could I help you? And I, so you can build them up by saying, you're kind of flummoxed because it seems like they're, they're firing on all cylinders, but you want to add value. What, what is it that you can do? So that's a great ask because you're, you're building them up. You're, you're pumping up their ego, but it's also getting them to think maybe, wow, this person's not just giving me the Ginsu knives, Hmm. <laughs> they're, they're trying to figure out, you know, what is it that, that they can do for me? And they, a lot of times people are, um, don't have an answer for you and just say, look, if you can't think of it right now, uh, feel free to just mull over that and, uh, give me a call or send me an email or text with what it is. If you need some time to think about it, because people are not being asked that question very much. So you will take some people by surprise when you ask that. And that's, that's fine. Just, and then just give them the permission to, to mull on it a little bit. Awesome. This has been amazing. Well, Patrick, um, I want one final question. Is there anything that I haven't asked you that I should have asked you or what else <laughs> do we need to know? I mean, you've given, you really have given so much value. Thank you. Well, that's what, great. What, and I love that question. That is a fantastic question that people should be asking people when they're helping them with a buy or sell transaction. I love that. So <laughs> you just gave your audience a gold nugget there with that question. Anything, anything final that we should, uh, anything final we should hear from you or is, is there maybe some places that we, our audience could connect with you online that they should know about? Well, if they go to the connectorsway.com, uh, that's the website, uh, for the book, uh, they can get the seven rules for building business, one relationship at a time from that website. Um, just give me their email. It's a downloadable, beautiful PDF. It's like a document they can print out and, and put on their wall. It's really, really nice. Um, so check that out. And up until mid-March, a Kindle version of my book is available for free on Amazon. It's an Amazon Prime read. And after that, you can get the Audible version or the print version or buy the Kindle version right there on Amazon. Excellent. Excellent. Awesome. Any social media places like what LinkedIn, Twitter? Yeah. Uh, Twitter? Yes, I'm on all those. Uh, uh, you'll find Patrick Alvin on all those, uh, all those channels. 
And if someone wants to connect with me on LinkedIn, I encourage them to do it, but I will not connect with you unless I get a personal note. So uh, (laughs) fair warning here. (laughs) Perfect. perfect. Uh, And you guys can follow me on Instagram at templeton.m and also on Facebook. Thank you so much, Patrick. This was amazing. I really appreciate your time today and we hope to connect with you again soon. Look forward to it, Matt. Thank you. Good luck with all you're doing. Thank you. Rockstar Nation, thank you for listening to Real Estate Rockstars. Listen, I need a favor. If you find this free content helpful, if you find our downloadable items from each guest helpful, please, I need you to pull out your pointing finger. Yes, the one finger that points at people and hit subscribe. Yes, subscribe. The more subscribers we get, the better we look in the ratings and the easier it is to get guests like Robert Kiyosaki, Barbara Corcoran, all the players that are on million dollar listing in the different cities. All that stuff makes it easier the more subscribers we get. So please subscribe. And listen, there's a lot of places you can leave comments. There's a lot of places you can like. We're on Facebook. We have an Instagram page. Instagram page is I am Pat Hyben. The Facebook is Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Feel free to leave us comments there. The most popular form of commenting seems to happen on YouTube. Yes, for whatever reason, it's a a very open environment. So just go to YouTube and go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Leave us comments there. Some of them we will read on the show. We love your feedback. So thanks, guys, and I hope you are having a great day. Oh, and also, listen, if you're going to subscribe and you haven't already left a review on iTunes, please do that too. Have a great day and thanks so much, Rockstar Nation. I really appreciate you.